What is the most recognized trademark in the world? No doubt about it, it is Coca-Cola. That beverage was originally born as a health tonic way back in the 1800s when an Atlanta pharmacist, John Pemberton, came up with the idea of using an extract of coca leaves and cola nuts because he was worried about his addiction to morphine. And he was looking for some sort of painkiller that would replace morphine. That's how it was born. Today, there's no longer any cocaine in there. There were traces of it at the beginning, but today we don't have to worry about that. There are some other issues, though, that have arisen about Coca-Cola. One that came up in the 1930s was whether or not Coca-Cola was kosher. The drink had become very popular, and Jews in the United States mostly were worried whether or not the ingredients conformed to the uh, uh, laws of kashrut. But there was a difficulty here, because Coca-Cola, of course, had built its image on the secret formula. So how was anyone to determine whether or not it was kosher without knowing exactly what was in there? Well, there was such clamor in the Jewish community for Coca-Cola, the company decided that they better do something because they didn't want to lose the money that was you know, to be made from selling to the Jewish market. So they uh, made a deal with Rabbi Tobias Geffen, who was the chief rabbi of Atlanta, and he would be told the secret if he promised not to reveal it, only to check for kosher ingredients. And the rabbi did. He looked through and he found a problem. Glycerin, which was used as a sweetener, as a preservative, but it was made from beef tallow. And of course, that was not kosher. So what was to be done? Well, Coca-Cola went to its supplier, Procter & Gamble. They came up with a solution because you could also make glycerin from vegetable sources. You could make it from, from any kind of vegetable oil like coconut oil. So they switched to that and there was no problem. And Coke became kosher until Passover rolled around. Now what we have here is Coca-Cola that is kosher for Passover. You can see right here. Now what is the difference? Well, it turns out that Coca-Cola originally used sugar as the main sweetener, but then they switched to high fructose corn syrup. Corn is not consumed by some sects of, of uh, the Jewish community, the Ashkenazi Jews, during Passover. There's all kinds of interesting stories behind that, but it was thought that corn flour could be confused by flour made from some of the grains like wheat that are not allowed on, on Passover. So rabbis decided that it's better to not have any corn at all. So corn sweeter, sweetener was a no-no during Passover. So what did the Coca-Cola company do for Passover to satisfy the clientele? They switched to sugar, pure cane sugar, as a sweetener during Passover. And it's only during Passover that Coca-Cola uses sugar as a sweetener because it is more expensive than uh, a corn sweetener. And it turns out that people around the world now wait for Passover, even if they're not Jewish, because they enjoy the taste of cane sugar in the Coca-Cola. So now you know the story behind Passover Coke. As far as uh, any kind of diet Coke goes, like Coke Zero, there was never any question about it because of course there is no sugar sweetener or corn sweetener in there. And the artificial sweeteners that are used are kosher. So uh, happy Passover to everyone, whether you're Jewish or not, you might enjoy the taste of sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup. Or of course, you might enjoy the taste of water, which is much healthier than drinking any kind of soft drink. And interestingly enough, back in 1935, when Tobias Geffen finally came up with this solution, he said that uh, uh, he had come up with a pragmatic solution to the problem, thanks to God. Well, whether or not God was involved, I don't know, but certainly chemists were involved.